Hi friends, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of Amazon's Relational Database Service, or RDS, and specifically how to use Microsoft SQL Server with it, though a lot of the same things will apply to the other database engines. We'll go build the database in just a second, but let me spend just a quick minute talking about theory here. In the land of databases, there are, of course, two big categories. We've got relational, where your data is stored in structured tables, and then non-relational, which have a more flexible structure. These are sometimes called NoSQL databases. We're going to focus on the left side here, relational databases, and in the world of AWS, that's going to be the Relational Database Service, or RDS. RDS is a managed database service, which basically means it's a database where Amazon does all of the underlying administrative work of setting up the actual server that it runs on, doing the backups, patching, recovery, and so on. So rather than you setting up a new server and going and installing something like Microsoft SQL Server directly and managing it, all of that stuff is done for you. Now, a quick distinction here, RDS is not the same as or another name for Microsoft SQL Server or Postgres SQL. Those are just two examples of database engines that are supported on RDS. The database engine, of course, is the underlying system that makes everything work, the query language, how you store and retrieve things from the database, and so forth. There's actually six different engines supported by RDS, shown here, and Microsoft SQL Server is just one of them. All right, but enough with the theory, let's go create a database and see how to connect to it. Here on the console, I've just navigated to RDS. If you weren't here already, just type in RDS, and that'll bring you right here. So let's start by creating a database. There's two ways you can do this. You can use a standard create, which is where you get to go and select all of your options, or you can do an easy create where Amazon's automatically configured things for you based on best practices. That's what we're gonna do here, so we'll leave that one selected. Like we saw in the slides a second ago, these are the different engines available. For this video, we're gonna be working with Microsoft SQL Server, so I'll select that. And then you need to select the instance size. So this is the actual server or virtual server that's gonna be running everything. We wanna go free, of course. The free tier will get a dbt2 micro instance type, and you'll see the additional details there. And then down below, some of this is filled out for us, but we can obviously change things. Your db instance identifier, I'll just leave that at database-2. The master username, I'll go with admin as well. And I'll specify the password here and confirm. And then you can view all of the things that are basically chosen for you by going with that easy create. Because this is just a basics video, I'm not gonna get into too much detail. Just know that most of these things are editable after the database is created. We are actually gonna go in and change one of these things afterwards, but this is gonna take quite a while to create. So let's get that started, create database. I do have one already up and running, database one. So the new one we're creating here is database two. You'll be able to refresh and see the status here. Right now we're creating. Now this is gonna take a little while. When I was running this earlier for my practice session, it took about 20 minutes. So this is a good time to remind you if you're finding this helpful so far, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button so it can be shared with more people. And also think about subscribing for more content like this. Also while that's running, let's talk about how we're gonna to connect to the database once it's up and going. If you've done any work with SQL Server in the past, you might be familiar with SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. I've got that open here and connected to another database. This is free to download. If you go to your favorite search engine, just type in SQL Server Management Studio Download, and you'll be able to grab it from the Microsoft site. It's a free download right here. I'm currently using version 18.10. Another free tool you can use to work with RDS is called SQL Workbench at sql-workbench.eu. And as noted, first thing on the page here, this has no relation to MySQL Workbench, which is an Oracle tool. But this is another free download and another way to work with the Amazon RDS database. All right, like I said, we're gonna be using SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS, but before you can do anything, you need to make sure that your database is in an available state or status. It can't be creating or configuring backup or anything like that. So this is gonna take a while. Like I said, I'll pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, our database instance has been created. Everything is good to go. We see the status is available. To connect to it from SQL Server Management Studio, we're gonna need a few things. So let me click into database two. You'll see various details here about the instance. 
What we need to connect though is the endpoint and the port. And then on the configuration tab, if you have forgotten it already, we have the master username here of admin. We're also gonna need that. So let me grab the endpoint. I'll just copy this. I'll remember the port is 1433. And now let's head over to SQL Server Management Studio and we'll say connect to a database engine. So we already have one connection going. This will be a new one. And then for server name, paste in that endpoint that you just copied out of the console. And then very importantly, you need to include the port at the end of this with a comma in between. So comma and then port 1433. Don't put any spaces there. It'll just be the dot com comma 1433. For authentication, you wanna go with SQL Server authentication like we have here. And then I'll enter that password that I used when I created this and hit connect. Now we're gonna let this do its thing for a second here. I'll tell you though, it's gonna fail, but because there's lots of walkthroughs out there that have you do exactly this, I wanted to show you this error and then show you how to fix it. But you'll get an error something like this, cannot connect to this name that we entered. We'll say, okay, let's go back to the console. Now, when we did that easy setup before, when we created the database instance, one of the settings in there was publicly accessible, and that is set to no. You'll see that here under security, which means that you can't access this outside of a virtual private cloud or VPC in AWS. And obviously we're not in the VPC, we're just on our desktop trying to connect from the SSMS client. So we need to make a couple changes here. If we scroll up, I'm gonna click on modify, you remember when we first started this, there was some settings that said they were modifiable after creating the database, and this is one of them. I'm gonna scroll down here under connectivity and then additional configuration. We'll want to make this publicly accessible. This is gonna give your instance a public IP address. We'll leave everything else the same. Scroll down, continue. And then let's apply that modification immediately and modify DB instance. Now, sometimes it says successfully modified up here on the top, but if you refresh your list, the status is actually modifying. So you'll need to make sure that finishes before you try to connect again. And I'll refresh, still going. And there we go, it's available now. So let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio and try that again, I'll hit connect. And I'll tell you, this is actually going to fail again. Apologies if this is a little tedious, but this is a really common error to come across. So let me show you how to fix this next issue. It'll be the same kind of a failure error that we saw before. But going back to the console, I'll click into database two. The next thing you wanna check is the VPC security groups. So right here, you'll see VPC security groups default, that is active. And again, that was all set up just by doing the easy setup. We didn't choose that when we went to create this. Now, VPCs and networking in AWS, that's definitely a whole different video or set of videos. I don't wanna to dig too much into the details here, but in short, a security group is a set of rules for the firewall, basically saying what ports are available to accept inbound and outbound traffic. Down here, you'll see the inbound rules and outbound rules. Just give us a little bit more space here. And for the issue that we're having where we can't connect to our database instance, we need to add an inbound rule for MS SQL. So here with inbound rules selected, I'll say edit inbound rules. And we're gonna add rule. The type here will be MS SQL. You'll see it automatically fills in that port 1433, the one that we were working with earlier. And then I'll just say this is from my IP that'll be detected by the browser and then save rules. So this will basically allow us to connect from SQL Server Management Studio on my laptop on my IP address. All right, let's try that connection one more time. That's the error from earlier. We'll try one more time to connect. Once again, we're gonna leave everything the same up here. We've got the server name with the comma 1433 for port, connect, 
and voila, now it works. Now, before we dig in more here in SSMS, let me give you a little bit more information about connecting and VPCs and so forth. That last bit was probably a little bit hand wavy, but if you need more information, I've put a link to this page down in the description for the video, so check this out. There's different scenarios for accessing your database instance, whether you're connecting from inside the same VPC or another VPC or so on. So if you get stuck and you still have some issues on that connection, check out this link. All right, back to SSMS one more time. I'll collapse this first one that I was connected to and this new one, database-2, let me just expand databases here. So this is connecting to the database up in the cloud. You'll see that we've got the SQL Server standard built-in system databases, master, model, MSDB, and tempdb. And you can expand these nodes here. This should look very familiar if you've done any database work or worked in SSMS before. You're also going to get a database called RDS Admin. And Amazon RDS uses this to store objects that it uses to manage your database. But from here, you can create your own database just by saying new database, or you could run scripts to do that. Running a query, say new query. You could do something like select add at version, execute the query. You'll see the version of SQL Server that we're on, and so on. So again, if you've worked with a local SQL Server database before using SQL Server Management Studio, the experience here is going to be exactly the same, except you're connecting to the database that lives in AWS now. All right, before we wrap things up, very importantly, let's make sure we're saving some money. So back to the console. We'll navigate back to RDS. We ended up in the EC2 console for our security groups. And I'll click on databases over here on the left. And you'll want to shut down the database that you created. Just select that, say delete. For what we're doing, I'm not going to create a final snapshot. And I will acknowledge that this is basically going to wipe everything out. That's okay. Delete me. And I actually had a second one here that I'll delete while I'm at it. You probably don't, but it'll be the same steps. And just make sure that everything gets deleted if you are following along so you don't have any surprise bills at the end of the month. But that's it. That's how to set up a SQL Server database using Amazon RDS and connect to it from the SQL Server Management Studio. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks so much for watching.